Good afternoon, everybody at home. I've just had myself a snack with two C's, and now we are back with even more C's. Now, do they pick apart this defense one by one, or will there be a brick wall in their way? Time will tell, and that first obstacle would seem to be this player very close. This is Deathly, who decides to be just that, just peeking on up. Almost gets a double for his trouble, but Scotland will put him in the rubble. And now this two versus three might be doable. Oh, it certainly is if that keeps hitting shots like that. They're in a power position with this Monty as well, commanding the site and giving that all the intel he needs. Everyone's fallen back out, but that's with Diffuser in hand, will be completely exposed and only the cover of a pistol to help him once he starts setting it down. And that's got to be on his mind with only 22 seconds left on the clock. He does start saying it by that bedroom door baiting out the aggression and it will work as Azza pushes on and falls to the pistol of the Monty all on leader now in the one versus two. This was a 4v1 at one point. Oh, the spray connects with both. The planets align for leader and that puts Tenstar on match point. That's leaping in dismay at the way they lost that round. How? James L. Gray taking down Icy, also important. As we see Veggie Patch go for a full send through Dirt Tunnel. They manage to make it past Magpie. They take down Kovac, but Magpie responds with a double of his own. Storm takes him out, and now it's two versus one. Sam Downos now has to respond. He has a C4 to open up a rotate. He may use it as a bit of a bait and switch. He does, in fact, sense that off. Storm trying to defuse a spray onto the yellow pink, but it's not quite enough. Storm is very lit up. Sam Downos now caught between a couple of vultures here. They know his location. He's stuck inside a church. Post-plant situation, he needs to get a pick on one of them. Decides to go for the blue rotate, but Storm is there. Catches him out with this lovely angle. The Rooney playing above him briefly. Of course, she's been forced out of that position now, but it doesn't matter because the push comes down VIP hallway. Kavana just flipped a switch. Sloth getting a ton of kills, a pair of them, an officer with one of his own. The C4 goes out, but it's completely blind, and the diffuser is going down a completely different location. It will be successful. Anarchic putting that down. Sloth with a triple on the round, and it's... Pretty much done and dusted here as leader attempting to scarper back to site to grab some exit frags. He will find Sloth eventually putting him in the dirt after that nice triple kill. But with 30 seconds left, he has to sweep back all the way round. He's trying to take a slightly more unconventional route going through Hall of Fame. But now, after those missed shots, they know where he's at. He may have 10 kills on the board, but he's going to have to add three to his name and get to a diffuser in about 17 seconds. It's just not going to happen. He's trying to find one at range, and it will be an R kick to finally see it out. Another double kill for this support player who's having an incredible season in Yukin. Oh, Minutemen have attack. one attack strategy. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> it's conga line, basically. Let's see if it works. Dumfries is leading the charge here, and uh, right now, MGR is just waiting. He, he will get killed. One, two, three. Nice. Four. There's the fourth. Okay. Wow. And uh, down goes Sardine and Octagon in that. Age of Soul is now met with a Jaeger in his face and we'll actually get the kill. Um, <laughs> Dumfries on Age of Soul literally doing, uh, I mean, unspeakable acts by the fireplace. Unspeakable? Yeah, I thought they were just cuddling up. If you thought that using the sausage was only viable on Finca, what? well, Dumfries is proving you wrong! Four kills to his name, unfortunately, can't find the ace, but what the hell just happened, Jerry? <laughs> Minutemen, they just slapped Triton round the face with a massive sausage. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> they, I mean, the cat cam was mounting Wamai to begin with, getting that sausage warmed up and ready for action. And then bang, 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 bang. I knew, but again with the open frags, he's really come alive in this. A jump out comes from Comrade Barney, and he gets his first kill of the day! Let's celebrate that fantastic stuff from the bandit, and incredible that he also manages to escape with his life, getting down into Bakery. So now three versus five, and he's, he's not done yet! He's hungry for more! He gets a second! What is going on? Comrade Barney has come alive! It just needed the MP7 in his hands, and now it's a two versus five, and Smunkies are really struggling. Titchy with a, well, an itchy foot takes out that little new mine. Now the hide has to try and come and support. It looks like they've defaulted to, well, they can't clear anything right now. They can't do the full yeah. map, map sweep that they want, so they just have to try and push him through fireplace. Maybe get a ninja plant down. The hide gets his head taken off. Bye, Barney! Triple kill on the round. Titchy, you're next. Is it going to be the, the quad for our previously donut-holding bandit? Titchy walks into sight. His legs could be exposed by the player in 90, but Trash Waifu is just not aware. And now the call has come through. Has to clutch out a 1 versus 5. He has to go ace clutch this one. 
does he expect the prone position of Comrade Barney just behind that pillar? Perhaps not. He's waiting for the aggression to come through. The fuser is sat outside right now. He could jump out the window and try and recollect it, but it would be a bit risky. He's going to push the 90. The goo mine will alert Comrade Barney to his position. Doesn't have time to pick it up. Comrade Barney swings. Can he get the kill for the quad? No, he can't. Tichy sucks him down, but he tries to pull out the goo mine and Deathly will make him pay. And just sort of leave it as a bit of a sandwich on the side of like, yo, come and take this beautiful sandwich. This hole in, in attic wall looks really appetizing. And if you see that T5 appear on your kill feed, no, he is going to back on out. Besides, it's a bit too hot for him to handle. The sandwich will be taken apart. They'll take the bread off the plate, put it back in the packet, which is a very odd thing to do, but you can save it for another day, perhaps. Potentially. <laughs> Have you ever done that? I'll be honest. Been halfway, no. halfway through making a sandwich and you go, mm, nah, you know what? This sandwich isn't for me. Put everything back. Ham goes in the fridge. Unbutter no. the bread. You're a wrong one. <laughs> you can't be doing that. It's important to keep control of tellers, but you don't do it by having people inside it. You do it by having the pulse teller you whether there's a plant going down. And Milo just took his eye <laughs> off the ball for a moment. I want to focus a little bit actually on JLE themselves because they had some very chaotic defenses as uh, Grace was pointing out but there was a lot of structure to their attacks and I want to have a look at this little replay we put together of round number eight where they go for a windows take on the top floor at this point we're looking at a four a three versus four and Zumi manages to re-establish uh, that sort of even man count and the key thing to notice here users getting down by the claymore for the run out so there's protection for this style of approach they know now they have that man advantage they're going to decide to go in for the push and get this plant down the cover immediately established by zumi and blackout allowing nerf to try and plant several times and he's very lucky to get away with his life here but it does come down to the one versus two and unfortunately nello well we've seen him clutch out huge in the past but the setup and the execute from JLE were just too good in that round. But like I said, it was a bit of an anomaly in terms of JLE's overall performance. They were structured on the attacks, but in the end, it went Eminem's way. And Hagra really stepped it up in that round for me, Whippet. I mean, just making Swiss cheese over that wall between the sites and getting so many picks through it. Cash was not a safe environment for these defenders at all. They may have invested a lot of stock in that position, but they did not get any returns and their money has just fallen out of their pockets. It's burned a big hole in them. In round number 10, we're going to need all 12 rounds for this one, though. I have a feeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on that one, Whippet. It's been so, so close. And they've been really smart, these teams, about trying to counter each other and do exactly what's needed to win these rounds. I mean, something quite beautiful about that round, which you kind of touched on there, was the way that Ghost Killer didn't necessarily take control of the whole of the top floor. They didn't even really take control of Attic. They just had a line of sight towards the hatch, and that was enough. You don't need to necessarily get bodies in there and have someone watching that lower attic door or anything like that. You just need to stop them from peeking the planter. And that's what they did. They had lines of sight to everywhere that Stark could possibly try and challenge onto the planter. And once it was down, they didn't even need to stay in meeting. They just evacuated to these safe spots in tower, even outside tower, and let the plant do the work for them. It was a wonderful take. I love this setup that's coming through from the start. The aggressive hold of closet with a Rooney gates to protect and then having the open wall inside of Attic to create a horrible three-way crossfire for anyone trying to challenge Akrin in this position. He does get away with a bit of a mistake there as he comes down to only a smidgen of HP. Jilly as well with his long crosser of fire from tower. They've got everything thought through here. Akrin with a beautiful C4 taking out Expo. Turco takes Hagra, but Sherm responds and refrags his own teammate. No, you can't be doing that. Left in a two versus four now and start and play safe. Madman pushing up white stairs though may be a bit of a pivotal factor here if he gets a cheeky pick, but he is known. Akron holding down trophy by himself well in the final frag in white stairs will fall the direction of team start. They've managed to catch up with a couple of defenses on the trot here or to fall the scoreline. Big window push may be what's in order here, unless Ghost Skillet can unlock this defense with very keen efficiency. A frag grenade comes out below Hagra, lighting him up 
quite substantially that hold being read into very nicely by Ghost Killer, not even necessarily needing to drone it out heavily, just knowing that the Aruni is going to be playing inside that closet as she was last time. Oh. Mex will land that second nade onto Hagra, and the Aruni is punished for her positioning. A big fragger as well in the name of Hagra taken down. Chili's position known too. They've completely dismantled this setup as the big tower presence is now lost. Turco claiming that frag for himself. A five versus three execute is on the cards here. Bomber, Akron and Arth have to back up. They have to hold very deep. A lot of their utility has been spent essentially because it is invested in that far master bedroom hold and now it's all about the gun skill. They have to string some multi-kills together. The drones are swarming in. C4 does go out. A beautiful toss from Bomber. He is holding this aggressively. He doesn't care that a lot of the utility is around here and he's got no real coverage from his teammates. He has to play his life right now. That's exactly what he's doing. Akron decided to retake instead reposition to that white stairs bomber he's really in a tough spot here he knows that he's in like basically a huge crossfire that the attackers have set up with 45 seconds left to go they could hold this they have the intel they've got that deployable camera looking towards attic but the push is coming through the frag goes the way of bomber Arth does go down however and it's a two versus three effectively as he's unresable madman deep inside of sight and mex is there to collect bomber now it's all up to akron prone at the top of the stairs but madman knows about it and that is a great take coming through from ghost killer absolutely ripping to shreds this extended hold from team start and surely that's all she wrote. Yes, it is. Welcome to overtime. Map one on Oregon. We couldn't separate them for 12 rounds. Can we get it done in OT? And welcome to the match, Chile. A huge 3K being the determining factor in that round. So manipulative, so maneuverable. He's worming his way in and out. A great pick there that we see. But look, this was the Chile Soak show from here on out. Takes out Expo inside of Armory, then meets the Maverick running up to him and grabs the final kill to top it all off with a plum. Excellent play from the Jaeger in that round. And this is not Oregon as we know it, Whip It. This is an exciting version of Oregon. This is huge stuff. This is counterplay. This is sort of unusual strategy. We've got glasses. We've got extended master bedroom holes. We've got fantastic sort of reads of each other's defenses and incredible frag play. We've got blunders. We've got everything. We've got clutches. I'm so excited. I'm over the moon. I'm hyped as hell, if you can't tell for this game. Overtime is what we wanted, it's what we expected, and by God have we got it. It's a 2v1, Schwai has to try and clutch this out for his team, or they're gonna be on match point, Jerry. He's already grabbed a very tasty double kill in this round, trying to claw things back, but he's still got Neuro and Exile to face down. He's trying to force his way up these red stairs, sent a couple of stuns that way, but instead he's doubled back. Bit of a bait and switch, going to pick up the Fuser, trying to clear his way through Garage while their backs are turned, and he does manage to make his way past that elevated angle, so one hurdle surpassed, but with a breach route, with breaching charges in pocket, he can make this entryway that he maybe wants to, but 20 seconds left, is it worth the effort? He does go for it, expects to play a top of red, couple of pre-fires here and there, doesn't seem like there's any intel for the side of Victor's, this is certainly winnable for Schwai, he can do this with 9 seconds left, he knows he has to go for the frags, he grabs Ooh. one in the form of Neuro, now Exile going beneath to try and deny the plant, but Schwai, Again, the plant coming down in an off position, and Exile, he's pushing through. Schwai will land the plant, but he doesn't react oh, quickly enough. Schwai, Schwai with the 4K and the 1v2 clutch, keeping Wild alive in this match.